Actually, an artist is someone who is talking to or expressing the mass mind or the mass subconscious mind of a people. And when the artist makes that work, it's then exhibited and people recognize their spirit or something of themselves mm -hmm. in that work. Yeah. You see, the artist is a channeler. The artist is someone who channels a force or an energy. An artist speaks to the archetypes. An artist, that's what he should be doing, is speaking to the eternal and the archetypes and showing that those forces even exist. One of the interesting highlights from my interview with Fen de Villiers was when the discussion shifted towards the topic of the mass of conscious mind. His point was that one of the ways one can tap into this realm is through art. The reasoning is that through art, people can recognize something about the work that speaks to them unconsciously. And so what's happening is that the artist is able to go around the consciously articulated words and straight to something deeper than that. Some spirit or force that is awakened when encountering a work of art. And it is through this medium that one can feel energized or be taken over by a sense of vitality absolutely consumed by the Dionysian spirit. Now you've probably felt this yourself. By listening to one small segment of music, you suddenly want to hear it in its entirety. Sometimes with just a single reading of a synopsis of a book, you'll feel intrigued enough to read the entire text. Of course, my favorite example is when you find the plethora of amazing thumbnails on my YouTube channel and are intrigued enough to click. But of course, I have to digress. In any case, what's interesting is that if you were to be intrigued or even invigorated at first impression, then that means that there has to be something within you that connects to whatever you come across and encounter. Otherwise, without this inner element, such a connection would not come about. Now this reminds me a bit about what art historian Gombrich has said about the original purpose of art. It was not to display something beautiful or ascetic but to display real life, specifically the most important parts of life, much like a photograph. This relates to all that I am saying because it implies that more often than not it is art that is used to preserve that which we find inspirational from the depths of our heart. For this, Gombrich uses the example of art in ancient Egypt. He explains how artistic accuracy and formulas were of tremendous importance because they were designed to preserve much of the real world, including humans into the afterlife. In fact, one of the ancient Egyptian word for sculpture was to keep alive. Therefore, art was in some sense a means of channeling oneself to the eternal. Through art, we feel connection to the ideals that transcend a single lifetime. Ideals that, though difficult to put into words, are something that we are aware of intuitively. And it is precisely the fact that it is hard to put into words that art serves as a very vital intermediary between ourselves and the ever elusive eternal ideals for as we all know, it is a painting that speaks a thousand words. Therefore, when we combine the idea that art is something that is able to tap into the subconscious mind, together with Gombrich's thoughts on how artists, before focusing on beauty, focused on immortalizing our ideals, it becomes clear that it is art that is able to illuminate something below the subconscious realm by awakening it towards the eternal. Indeed, one can say that it is art that speaks to reality higher than itself. When I look at the art today, I try to look for those that reflect the zeitgeist, for better or for worse. This is to say, I look for art that reflects the times that we live in. As Richard Huelsenbeck once said, the highest art will be one in which the thousandfold issues of the day are revealed in its consciousness. An art that which allows itself to be noticeably shattered by last week's explosion, which is forever trying to collect itself after the shock of recent days. This implies, of course, that observing the art around us can tell us much of the state of our world, especially in terms of cultural values and also what we as a society or as a species struggle with. In fact, it is observing the art that tells us much about who we are. To put things into perspective, would Picasso have painted Guernica before the Spanish Civil War? Is it a mere coincidence that there was the boom in Russian art and music after the fall of an authoritarian and oppressive czar, or the rise of heroic realism after the fall of Weimar Germany when the country was looking for someone to guide them through the troubled decades marked by civil unrest and financial upheaval. 
Is it a mere coincidence that in post-war Japan, artists such as Yukio Mishima was seen as an anachronistic outlier? The point of course is that art is a reflection of man's spirit and through it we can see the state of society. It is my belief that the art of the day serves as a sort of Rorschach test that lets us look into the state of man at any given time. And if art is a reflection of the time and space it is born in, that begs the question, will I find another Dostoyevsky outside of Russia? Will I find another Mishima outside of Japan? This is of course to ask if the artist that one seeks is limited by space and time. I suppose even if the artist cannot be found elsewhere, their art certainly can, and when it does transcend these constraints, it is considered to be a classic. Now, there is indeed something about classics that one cannot help but find intriguing, and this intrigue comes because it transcends the aforementioned barriers of space and time. A classic by definition is something that is appreciated by people from another place in another time. Now art of course has no inherent value, its value is imposed upon by the observer, and yet despite this, despite the generations that come and go, it is the truly great art that is able to stand the test of time. The answer to why this is might have to do with what was originally said in the introduction to this video, which is that though the people may come and go, in each of them there may be innate values that lay dormant, waiting to be awakened. And when the artist is able to tap into these values, he taps into something that speaks to every man regardless of who he is. These are the artists that are not bounded by the expedient issues of the day, nor the revolving door of social and political ideologies that loses its grip on man as soon as its relevance fades. Things like love and power on the other hand is something that can speak to everyone regardless of who they are or what they think. It can inspire minds all across the board for it is an eternal value. And especially in the case of art that is able to stand the test of time and become something that is considered to be a classic, it is the will of the artist that seeks to convey that which is eternal, that which men have always struggled for. And it is my hope that it is art that reflects the will of the artist. To me, art is the expression of the will to power in ascetic form. So it follows that the statement the art makes is often a reflection of the spirit of the artist. It is the internal workings of the artist being sublimated through art. This is why what is often considered to be great art is seldom built in a corporate setting but rather by the hands of a genius or a troubled madman. The bottom line is that art is an expression of the artist, and though displaying what man has always eternally contended with will not always be appreciated. The reverse of this is true in that what is appreciated is more often than not the display of what man has always eternally contended with. It is therefore the artist that transmits onto the general population in visual or auditory form the abstract conflicts of mankind, and to convey such a message must come from a place of conscious integrity because the display of man's most innate struggles cannot be faked. For the people will be quick to notice the inauthenticity in a painting that attempts to deceive them of motifs that are all too familiar. This makes sense because each person is acutely and inherently aware of his needs and struggles, be it consciously or intuitively. Any art that seeks to embody the struggle in a fraudulent way will only be resented for it is almost mocking the motifs of the human condition. Instead the art must be authentic and it must represent accurately the human condition. This is something that even the ancient philosophers knew. It was Socrates after all who said that the top priority of a Greek sculptor was to express in his artworks the workings of the soul by accurately observing the body in action and to convey the unspoken feelings set up between people. Therefore the unspoken workings of the soul shall be immortalized through art. And to truly convey these workings of the soul, it is imperative that the artist be congruent and authentic. The themes that the art conveys must come from the very depths of the artist himself. The artist must be conscious of the values that he is expressing. He must use art as an extension of himself and not a means to cover who he is. An artist is a person for whom art isn't an escape from himself, but rather a form of assertion of himself. It is something like an expression of introspection of the artist. A muddy conscience cannot produce an authentic art. What's required is a congruency that makes a direct line from the depths of one's soul all the way to the tip of the paintbrush, and from the tip of the paintbrush to the depths of the soul of the entire world. 
and every so often there does come the art that can indeed channel the eternal ideals that transcend any single life. These are the artists that is of course not bound to the limitations of class, politics, race, or culture. For these are merely formed as an inevitable byproduct of the very ideals that people of all walks of life strive for. Though there is much differences between people, be it how we pray, how we eat, or what we value, there has always been a common set of motifs that have accompanied man throughout history. These are the motifs of heroism, of sacrifice, of love, and of course, the search for power, wisdom, and beauty. And it is these themes that can be expressed through art to remind us of who we are. It is art that reminds us of what keeps mankind alive and what mankind lives for, but ultimately, it is also art that reminds us about what mankind is willing to die for. Art is the mirror that reflects not what we look like, but rather who we really are as a character.